Well, hello there. Watching the press preview, a first look at what is on the front pages as they arrive. Uh, live with me here in Downing Street to see what's making the headlines uh, is the associate editor of the Daily Mirror, Kevin Maguire, and the consultant editor of the Daily Mail, Andrew Pearson. Lovely to see you in person very for nice the first time in a very long time. Yes. And, uh, here we are on another one of those evenings, it has to be said. So, front pages, which are uh, a little late tonight uh, because of the pace of developments over Boris Johnson. So let's take a look at those front pages. The Eye calls the attempts by his own colleagues to remove the Prime Minister, a cabinet coup. The Times puts it bluntly, Johnson fights for his life. Not sure you've got that one. Uh, there it is, in fact, Johnson fights for his life. The Metro, let's have a look. Get exit done, Boris, the paper says. This is the mirror with an almost identical headline. The Financial Times shows Mr Johnson in the Commons today saying he's been rocked by the Cabinet revolt. The Guardian describes Mr Johnson as desperate and deluded as he clings to power. The Liverpool Echo, never a fan of Boris Johnson, after remarks he's made about the city and its people in the past, asks, have we finally seen the back of him? This week's New Statesman calls it the last days of Boris Johnson, why the Prime Minister has no one left to lie to. While the star imagines what Mr Johnson might be saying to himself tonight as the pressure on him to quit ramps up by the hour. So, reminder, by scanning the QR code you will see on screen during the programme, you can check out the front pages of tomorrow's newspapers while you watch us. So let us get the very latest thoughts then of Kevin Maguire and Andrew Pearce. Taking a look straight away at the Telegraph while we would digest another Cabinet resignation. Andrew. Simon Hart, of course, Welsh Secretary, a loyalist, uh, was one of those who went into the uh, Cabinet thinking he could persuade Boris Johnson to resign. Uh, he thought wrong because Boris Johnson defies all political gravity, all political logic. He is, it is part of his irrepressible energy and charm. He doesn't do things like anybody else does. He's defied them and in the process he's also sacked one of those who came to see him privately insulting, Michael Gove. Now that is a delicious piece of irony. It is the case of revenge is a dish best eaten cold because of course Michael Gove stabbed by Boris Johnson in the front and the back in the 2016 leadership contest and it was over in 2016. And although they've worked closely together, they've never really trusted each other. Johnson's gone nuts. This is uh, Britain's Trump here, barricading himself in number 10 and not wanting to come out. He's, he's lost. It's, it's over. It's finished. Whatever he's doing, if he's you know, sitting there rocking or whatever or plotting, you know, it's just, it's just crazy. There's no dignity to this. I, look, I, like Andrew, can go back to the resignation forced out of Thatcher. Then you remember John Major lost at an election. Uh, follow on, Tony Blair quit after 10 years, knew the game was up. Gordon Brown was out at an election. David Cameron had to go, he had to go after losing the refer referendum. May was forced out by a re revolt. He now barricade, and he's just, it's just a matter of time. I mean, this is, this is Looney Tunes, Tunes just, isn't it? This just, is Looney just, Tunes. But I don't think any of us are surprised, because he's, we always have been, we've been writing. Yeah. You'll have to drag him screaming and shouting out of there, and that's exactly what's going to happen. Now, I think mm -hmm. probably it will all change on Monday. The 1922 committee executive decided they're not going to change yeah. the rules, but there'll be a new executive elected on Monday, and I suspect they will then say to the Prime Minister, if you don't go, there'll be a ballot. He, these are the sort of numbers against you. Unless... Unless he says you've just removed me as the leader of the Tory party, but I'm not going to stop being Prime Minister. I'm just well, going to stay in it. I mean, look, yeah. I mean, this. Th Technically, th he could do that. Yeah, this is crazy, crazy stuff then from the a Queen crazy might have to person. Yeah. Then the Queen might have to well, we, we got, we got used to it. I know. Yeah. Well, she had quite a tough year this year. Well, she can't like him, can she, after he, he, he got her to unlawfully uh, prorogue Parliament. So, you know, there's no love lost there. But it is, but this is, this is bonkers. This is, the, this is the end of a regime. It's a terrible, sordid, tattered end. Well, let's take a look at The Guardian, shall we? Desperate, deluded yep. as he clings to power. Yeah. The question is why. Now, as far as uh, his allies say, he has got a mandate of 14 million people. He's been put there by the British people, not by his MPs. He believes it's an almost presidential system in this country. Yeah, it's not, though. It's that actually parliamentary he democracy. won that election. Yeah. Well, indeed so. And, in fact, yeah. actually, Jacob Rees-Mogg said, we're moving to a presidential system in this country, which, of course, uh, people like you say, yeah. no, we are not. But that's why he's staying, he believes, yeah. because he was put there by the British and, uh, people. That's not why. He's staying is staying because he's a massive egotist who thinks it's all about him and it has been throughout his life when he was a kid he wanted to be world king 
being brazen, lying, refusing to accept you make mistakes, for defying reality. It's got him a long way. It's got him into number 10. And he's now trying to barricade himself in there. I suppose he's going to have a cade or deliveries and not, ref not come out. We'll probably see tanks and soldiers on the streets <laughs> next. I mean, this, this I mean, but, come on. But, it, it, is, it is nonsense what, what Johnson is but, doing. But you're going right? to hear this over the next yeah. couple of days from a lot of Tory MPs. Yeah. Look, he got the biggest Tory majority since 1987. Margaret Thatcher was the only one to get a bit bigger. 1987. Yeah. So he's a, he's a proven winner. He's won two London mayor elections. It's not him popping out. Oh, it's the cat. So the cat's still here. Well, the, well, the cat's <laughs> Fleeing. The but, cat's no, given up no, now. No, no, no. I mean, look, it's, 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 it's had probably, enough. The cat will probably go up and kill a mouse. Well, if well, 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 he's going to, if he's going to haul himself up, he'll probably but, worry he's going to get eaten. But but seriously, know. that is the point. Oh, yes. The supporters are making. On. Boris delivered that majority, not the Conservative Party. He won it by sheer force of yeah. with that great phrase, "Get Brexit done," and he did. And he did. And he got us through COVID. Uh, he's had got, done well during the Ukraine war, but mm. I accept we are in the end 70. of days. We are in the end of days. Dead, yeah. Let, let's go back to that confidence vote, 148 MPs. What we don't know and we'll never know is how many people who were on the government payroll yeah. actually voted in that, yeah. of which there are about 120, and about a third of them have decided to resign. So the question is, can he fill those posts? And if he cannot, what happens then? Yeah, well, presumably he'll just say, I'll have fewer posts in the, the frame of mind. Well, he is at the, at, anyway. yeah, at the, the moment, that, that's what he will try and do. Yeah, he'll probably say it's streamlining, levelling yeah. down or rolling up or something. You know, I mean, look, he won't be able to fill those posts. Uh, in the tea room today, there was one Tory MP looking at his phone, waiting, uh, waiting for a job offer, and another Tory MP said, you're, you're like the client to be the chief stoker on the Titanic after it's hit the iceberg. Look, this ship is sinking, it's gone. Who would really want to, to join it? There might be some people who will never get a job in any other circumstances who will be prepared to do it for a few days to get their clammy hands on yeah. the red box, yeah. their bums in a car and a few quid in, well, a, in an office. That's what, the, that's what they will do. But it's over. It is you've over. Got to, you've got to think about the experience oh. here of Nadim Sahawi. This is the most extraordinary position. So he's the chance of the exchequer. He's denied reports that uh, if he wasn't given the chancellorship last night, he would have resigned last night, which could have brought the whole edifice tumbling down. So he's chancellor for 24 hours. Not even 24 hours, and he goes into number 10, where there's other ministers yeah, to say, it's over, Prime Minister, you've got to go. But that's part of him trying to establish his authority, because he wants to keep that job when Boris Johnson has gone. Or and I think, actually, he's highly Boris qualified Johnson's to do it. Job. Or get Boris Johnson. Well, some suggest job. he only ever wanted to be Chancellor, but, I mean, mm. you know, we, we wait and... Don't and, ever uh, think um, that about ambitious okay. Tories. They all want to be Prime Minister. OK, paint the scene inside um, Downing Street for us. If we look at your paper, for example, Just Get Exit Done, which is a lovely play on words, obviously. Yeah. In goes people like Nadine Doris and all these other names, including uh, Simon Hart, the Welsh Secretary... Well, Nadine Doris have gone into to say Don't absolutely go. so Don't there go, they are there are people there for and against him now does he see them individually which is what i think margaret thatcher decided which was everyone says was a big mistake does he see them collectively when they're more powerful well i mean what was happening inside there this afternoon well you know better you better than me sadly uh, but no, they were, you, Kenny? They, i can't think why only only the only those who really don't like him uh, and they, they go in and they just say he's in in denial that's what they say he's in total denial he just can't accept. It's gone from him. Uh, and it's got him a long way, and it's got him the job, and he's clinging on to it. But that's what they say. Now, Nadine Dorries is one of those who won't get a job with any other prime minister. Uh, she, you know, she adores Johnson because he, he gives her work. Some of the others would get jobs with us. But I think in the Conservative Party, you just chat to them over the road. And they're all just fed up because they're made to look absolute idiots. Well, and they all fear, or a large number, that they're going to lose their seats Nadine, if he carries on. Nadine Joyce has been mates with Boris Johnson for years and years. It's nothing to do with getting a job. She was in the, uh, he was, They had the, off their no joining offices. Uh, joining offices when he first became an MP and they've yeah. been to going be fair, great mates for years. She's not the, the main mover and shaker in no. this debate. So the situation is they say go and yeah. he says what? No. no. I'm not going, yeah, yeah. because um, I won that mandate, yeah. I had a huge mandate, the, the public support me, I've got things to do, I've got to talk to President Zelensky tomorrow, uh, I'm getting on with the cost of living crisis. It is extraordinary, of course, he lost his chance to join a cost of living crisis. Big, big step. And those two ministers who resigned last night would have thought the whole edifice would have crumbled today. It didn't. The Welsh Secretary's gone, yeah. decent man, but one of the more minor players in the Cabinet. So if we take a look at the Metro, similar headline to yours, in fact, it pictures Sajid Javid, who made his 
his resig resignation speech after Prime Minister's questions today, and the word from him was integrity. In fact, the yep. word, if you look across the resignation letters, has been integrity, mm -hmm. honesty, being honourable, principle. Now, if he goes and does this move by all those MPs mean a move towards the importance of truth as the backbone of democracy? Is it a major shift? almost away from, from Trumpism, if I can put it that boldly, do you think? Well, I think at the moment you've got somebody who's gone to an extreme, and that's, that's Johnson, who's just lied and lied and lied, and he's now a, a dead man lying. He just does not know... Ed Arger, health minister, has just gone while you're talking. Yeah. Continue. So well, there's, there's another job for somebody, uh, you know, I mean, maybe Nadine Dorries can double up or something and do, uh, do lots of them. But you'd, you'd have to see what comes after. Now, of course, the charge from all the opposition parties is, look, you lot who I now want to get rid of him, you're quite happy to support him all the way through Partygate, all the other lies, all the other disasters. You've got fed up now. Your rat's leaving the sinking ship because you fear you're going to lose your seats and your jobs and you're going to be defeated. So how principled is the move to get rid of him? I mean, that's a, that is a, I think it's a legitimate question in British politics now because they made a pact with the devil when they elected him in 2019. They knew what he was like. It was always going to end in tears. This is no great surprise. Uh, other yeah, but he, that, other he, did what, he did what he was chosen to do, yeah, which is massively win you know a general he, election. He got Brexit done, now he's trying to get it undone, because he had no yeah, other ready Kevin, deal Kevin, as he Kevin, accepts. He, he, he put a border down the Irish Sea. He lied. He, he lied about Brexit he, itself. He, he, he won a landslide victory, and he also mm. put pay to that appalling old Marxist who his lot were supporting, Jeremy Corbyn. Imagine if he'd taken over the country, we'd be gone, gone to hell in a handcart. Yeah. It would have been appalling. Oh, my... God, do you, th do you think we might have worse but, but, economic but, but, growth than anyone but, but, else but, but Russia? Know, you might have got 170,000 debt. These, these, these ministers who are resigning now, they're thinking in a very, very cynical way, they don't resign now, how will it look if Boris has gone in two or three days? Why didn't they go? And already in our time, briefly, we've had two more resignations, yes. including a Cabinet member. Um, quick line, actually, on that point from The Telegraph, before we see your paper, The Mail, which is just in. Um, the Daily Telegraph can reveal that the Government Whip's office calculated that Mr Johnson would get just 65 confidence votes from almost 360 Tory MPs. Whoa. Number 10 insisted he would stand in a second confidence vote if necessary. So just 65 left standing. Well, that would be humiliating. Yeah. I mean, absolutely humiliating. And we don't, we never know what figures Graham Brady gave Theresa May when she was in exactly the same position in, tw in 2019. But she saw the figures, it spooked her enough, and she said she was standing down. And then, of course, she went on for two months, because it takes two months to elect probably a Tory leader. Yes, and if we uh, take a look at The Sun, uh, which is also in, well, we discussed that very point, in fact. Um, what would happen, do you think, if... Um, let's have a look at The Sun, then. Uh, you'll have to uh, dip your hands in blood to get rid of me. Um, don't quite know where that quote has come from, if it is indeed a quote. But anyway, the whole point is that Theresa May lasted for... And I've got the figures in front of me. Uh, 1,106 days. Boris Johnson is currently at 1,078 days. He's he, wants not... to, he wants to beat her. Okay. That is a big part of this. You have to remember, politicians have got great egos, yes. and, they, and it's where they're going to be in the, the pantheon of shame, because they're all going to be quite low down in how long they survive. But he definitely wants to beat Theresa May, and she'll be desperate that he doesn't. But it, but it all shows it's about him and his ego, and it's not about the country. It's not about the cost of living. No, no, no. But, but, but Johnson, just as he's lying, is like nothing we've seen before in modern history. It's just got this gigantic ego. and I think Sajid Javid got it when he, he said, that, look, I wanted to come into politics to do something, not to be somebody. And Johnson just wanted to be somebody. The old Etonian, the and self-entitlement, you get your port, right, you want to be prime minister, but what do you do when you're, you're there? Now he wants to beat Theresa May. Well, there's no way to run a country when you've got big problems in public services and the economy is in serious trouble, partly because of the policies of his government, but not entirely. We've only got a minute left. Just want to see The Times and uh, the inside pages of The Times. We saw a flash of it there as well. Uh, Johnson fights for his life, as you can see. There he is at uh, PMQs and the inside pages. Go sacked by phone as a stream of ministers tell Johnson to quit. And we understood that Michael Gove was the man who was helping Boris Johnson prepare for PMQs yeah, today. Yeah, sure he was. That headline on the front of The Times is interesting, but that could have been written this morning, frankly, because he was fighting for his life last night. He's still fighting for his life. He's going to lose. 
uh, but he fights on. Mrs Thatcher famously said when she came out of number 10, when she'd come back from Paris after that signing that treaty, and she hadn't done as well enough in the first round of the Tory leadership concert, has a time she said, I fight on, I fight to win. She was gone the next one. Yeah, morning. but she left with some dignity. She did. Johnson is going to leave with zero dignity. He is going to have to He's be gonna make a fight dragged, He's kicking gonna make a fight and screaming. Uh, they may have to get men in flapping white coats to take him out. He's got a, he's got a career to uh, to fall back on, which is journalism, of course. Isn't oh it? God, well, he, well, he, and writing about it. Book to write. Well, he, he <laughs> Maybe did, he, that's he, the point. He caused yeah. enough harm to our trader uh, in the past with his was it two hundred seventy five thousand pound chicken feed. He called it the Telegraph. I don't think he'll employ him again. Kevin McGuire, still a fan, as you can hear.